Hi everyone, welcome back to video number two. So we did the main block in, now we're going to continue on with refining some of the the actual movements here inside. I, I, I see Anita slim down his nostril there a little bit. We need some more details and stuff in here. We've, we've got some good color here. It's nice and dry because I had a little lunch and now I'm just going to keep going. All right. So uh, let's come back in here. And I was just mixing up here some of my my blues, my bur my violets, my burnt siennas. I'm going to add a touch of white to it here. Make kind of a lighter, almost um, warm, warmish gray here. So a little more burnt sienna. Let's see what that looks like right in here. Yeah, that's a good color. Right in there, put some of that streak down there on the side of him. And uh, we could lighten and darken uh, some of these shadows right in here. And this is what I do. I just go through, work them again. We want to get some of the, uh, you know, movement. Some of the, the hair kind of look to him here by having some of this, you know, grab some. This brush might be a bit too big for some of that movement that I want to do. We'll drop down here in size. Let's drop down. This is a six here. Let's drop down. We'll warm up. I should maybe have gotten a little bit more of my burnt sienna here, but we'll see. We'll push a little curvature there into his neck right there. That's pretty good. Um, maybe a touch of light with that to uh, hit. So you can see what I do is I'm getting a little bit more refined with some of my colors and I don't want to take out that is, and I'm very aware of that what I put in before and I don't want to take everything out. I just want to add subtle little uh, uh, you know more tones softer subtle tones in there as well. Let's gray that up a bit. We'll come back over here down this side, just a touch here, and um, get some of that wider plane that's right in here. And this is what I do, is I just come back and forth. Uh, let's add just a little bit up there by the crown there, a little more burnt sienna and some of that blue as the shadow here. So you see it's just small little uh, evolving, re you know, marks here. Let's get some of this darker shadow right in here that will narrow down his nose just a bit. Get that shadow in there. And uh, maybe uh, pull across his nose here with just a maybe a bit more burnt sand in there. So you get the idea here. I don't want to take up too much time. You get the idea though. I spend a lot of time here working and evolving these tones, looking and my marks, if you remember from where I started on this in the last video, my marks now are getting smaller and smaller. Do you see that? The, the actual touches that I'm doing here are getting smaller and smaller as I refine just a little bit more. Like I've got a big plane of light and dark here, which I like, but I can create like a little half tone right in between those two, maybe a warm and cool, a little bit of a half tone more and set that, yeah, maybe just a touch more burnt sienna. See, I don't take off what I did. I just revolve, evolve it and just set in that little half tone that helps his nose round over a touch more and uh that's what i'm that's what i look for and i did go get myself a new little number two which is what i like this is a brand new one so it has a very nice point on it it's not all sprayed splayed out from all the painting and stuff so I'm going to use this to help refine up this eye just a touch more. I want good clean lines and set here on the eye. I want this eye to really set his whole expression 
here. And so I just, I want to be very careful. The tiniest little mark can make a difference. And I'm going to put a tiny little bit of warmer burnt sienna because I do have room and I do see it. And so I'm going to put a tiny little mark of burnt sienna right up there into the front of the eye. Yep. And I know it's kind of probably impossible for you to see that, but it does work. And we'll put a catch light here. Just a real soft little catch light right here on this side. Tiny little dot. And then if it gets too big, which it is a bit too big, I take it down with some of my burnt sienna and blue. I just poke into it a little bit. Sometimes it, I don't like it. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's a nice little, just a subtle little catch light there. And in actuality, on his nose and stuff, we'll just make a lighter gray, not a pure white, lighter little gray. And we'll put these catch lights on that are actually the shiny parts of his nostrils here. And we'll push some of those on. And, uh, yeah, and a little bit of gray right in here on that side of it there. And so it's actually, and there's a soft little gray catch light here on this side. A little bit right there. And see, it's the tiniest, guys. It's the tiniest little bit that's going to make this really nice. I'm going to round up this lower one, make it actually bigger than what it is. And I find I do that. I like doing that. And then I'll paint shadow back into it to paint it down into position. Sometimes that's easier than trying to make it absolutely perfect. So you can see, you know, painting that like that, that works a lot better, I think. I can, I can have some touches of warmer tones and stuff down in here. Some of this you'll see, I will, I will work on this again and again as I refine this. I love this painting, and so I'm going to spend some time refining him down some of these marks like that, looking for some of those uh, little tiny touches of color. And I'll do this throughout his whole body. And uh, it, that, it, that's the amount of time. I'm just working this tone. I want this tone. I'm getting closer with my tones. So I start to become more particular about the, the actual tone here. And so I want that little bit darker right in there. Maybe just a bit more of the red violet into that here. And a touch of burnt sienna. Just, you know, just to get that tone a little closer to what I see there on the monitor. A bit of it tapped around right up in there. Here we go little bit more definition tiny bit a little bit whispered here and if I get it too big I just take the softer gray I like that softer gray take just a touch of that out but you can see all of that works really nice we'll get some of that gray right in there all of that works in helping refine him just a bit more. And I love this little too for these tones. Like a little bit lighter, slightly warmer. And those of you that, you know, this is exactly what, those of you who've watched some of the portraits that I paint, this is the way in which I approach the portrait. And Sandin, who we lost last year, John Howard Sandin, who I think was one of the most masters at painting portraits. I learned so much watching his videos and reading his books and, uh, um, you know, studying his techniques. He had such a way of breaking down the thought process of it and he called this particular stage of the painting which doesn't make a difference if you're painting portraits or you're sitting here and painting an elk 
he called this particular part of the painting the particularizing of the painting. This is working the smaller little bits of tone. And see, I'm a little bit off on that one, but I don't take it out. I'm going to soften the coolness of it, and then I'll lighten it up to where it needs to be and get that, that uh, and I need to straighten out that mark. But see, it's, you know, what are you doing? You're just working an extra couple hours on the painting here and refining these tones. And this is what really, I mean, especially on like this guy here, this is what really is going to take him into the next level of a painting here. You know, take him to the next, take you from just an, you know, into a masterpiece, from just a painting into a masterpiece here of working these smaller little bits of tone right in there like that. And see, there's the, you look at it and you go, wow, you okay? I mean, then look at the photos, those of you that have the photo, look at the photos and you'll see that little bit of light that tracks along his upper lip. You know, those are the things that, you know, in a lot of paintings, no, I won't do that. That's too much time to put in there for what you're going to sell the painting for. But for this one, yeah, we'll put that in and, you know, we'll we'll take this one to the next level here. And uh, because I want to here and uh, it's good practice. And I'm going to take this right up to here. Okay. So before we go on, so I'll do this, and I'll work this a little bit more, touching some of these, looking for some of these lights. You know, there's a light gray right there, which is perfect. I have some right there. And I'll pull this down right down there to put that side plane under that eye. I'm seeing that tapped right along the edge right there. That's just all good stuff there. That helps him. Now, before I go, and I, I, I want to work some more, you know, out into all of this area, all of him, of course. Let's go out and put some of the first bits on the uh, antlers out here. So we'll take some dark violet, a little green, a little burnt sienna, the darker colors. And, of course, I'll change them up a little bit. There's a little cast shadow that's coming right on this one around that side here. So I'll look for the dark shadows first. Where do I see them? And I'm looking up at the monitors where I'm looking up up there. And you see him up there, but I have my big monitor and I'll have a little bit of a rounding shadow here that comes down. And a little bit on this one. There we go. And Sometimes I paint these antlers so detailed, sometimes very simplistically. Like the, um, the one I did uh, with the uh, uh, Colorado, the mule deer that I did. It's on the channel last month or so I put that up. Maybe so that I just ended up selling that painting. But uh, that one, maybe it was a little longer ago than a month. But that one I did the antlers very simplistic. This one I'll put a little bit more work into. So I'm looking, and like right here, there's two cast shadows across that I see, and that's from the other two horns there. So I add those. This is going to be a cast shadow down in here. And then we can put a form shadow. A cast shadow is a, a shadow that is cast from another object. A form shadow is what gives it its roundness. So up here on this one, there's no cast shadows, but there is a little bit of a form shadow here, the roundness of it, right up in here, right there. So now we've got the mid-tone and the shadows. There's some lighter tips to the horns, which are more gray. So we'll grab some of our grays here and some light and a couple of different versions of it. Sometimes I add yellow as I get lighter, warmer. But let's put a bit of that light up here. And this one has a lot of, boy, this little number two when it's new is fantastic. So we'll grab this one. We'll just glaze down some of that light here. Let's add just a touch of warmth to that. And you'll see, I'll lighten that up. But see that even this, I've got all these mottled colors. 
And that just makes them so pretty as we model this up. We get these colors on here. And then I'll tap and use the color a little different than what I did before there. Tap that one in. These others didn't really have too much, so I'll just gray it down a bit. And we'll just lightly give a bit of the color in there, just to say we did it. Just breaks up the antlers a bit. Break up some of the light of the antlers right there. Usually though with the with the elk, I spend a lot of time on the antlers because I really love painting them. Because I, to me, it is it is the most powerful part of the animal is these beautiful antlers. I'm going to put a little bit more white up here. See if I can really grab that interest right there. Maybe a bit more light right up here on this one. Because that pulls down right in there and we can you know you could use a light gray like this maybe a little burnt sienna and a little blue here see i got a bluish gray there a little burnt sienna into that a lighter little gray and this is called scumbling just lightly and the fusion brush is perfect for this just lightly touch the the surface just let it like a little butterfly just flying right over the surface there lightly touching the surface and that adds those other tones mid-tones into that and so it's you know scumbling was always described as working lighter tones on top i use it for i use scumbling in darker tones but the paint is fairly dry some people call it a dry brushing like right now but in the old world we called it scumbling and uh so a lot of people do dry brushing, but uh, I like the, the term scumbling. Here I added a little open medium, so it, it drags a little bit smoother through the horn that I want. And uh, let's get these lighter tips out here on these. There we go, a little cast shadow right up over that one. And if I really want to work these, I would work these several more times, uh, grabbing all the mid-tones. So you see, uh, that's where you're going to get the greatest definition. So I have that right in there, and the white's down just a little bit far. So I would take a mid-tone, something a little different, blue, maybe burnt sienna and a little green. See the different kind of gray that that makes? It's a beautiful kind of gray. And maybe I just tap that through here see and that makes a different type of gray on the horn that is really kind of pretty and that's what i do that's what i look for is some of those differences let's put a little bit more right up here on this one pull that down Right up on this one. There. Isn't that fun? God, just love doing this. Yeah, let's put some up on a little white tip up onto this one. And soft gray on that photo. These are softer gray up here. So we'll just add a little bit there to those. But you know, you can you can see now, I don't know if, you, if the camera shows that you can get beautiful tones in here. And I can come back even with this softer little, uh, a little white, a little bit of the green and some of that burnt sienna and just hit, uh, let's go a little touch lighter. Almost like a scumbling, just drag with the light brush here some of this light here and hit that needs to be a lighter tip on that one too but just hit a little bit of the highs and lows here and uh, it just adds so much and it's another tone right that's the burnt sienna and a little bit of the green 
just adds another tone in there that uh, gives a bit more interest to the to the horn. And that would be a good one right in here to bring down this connection area right there. Tap that in right in there. And then let's go back to a little burnt sienna and blue, slightly darker, cooler. And tap some of that down right in there. So it makes a, a beautiful connection there right to his head. And um, there would be uh, a touch of light as you get that horn band right there. There we go. And uh, yeah, that works. Uh, soft little yellow burnt sienna, touch of white here. Just little bits of color touches. There, that's good. Let's get just a touch more yellow with that. Here, a little bit more coming down. Don't get rid of all that other color. There we go. But that right on that side of his head where it's lightest right in there could use some more light strokes. So I'm a little bit dark there that now that I see all these other colors on there, I'm a little bit dark so I could lighten that area up just a bit and a little more gray that violety gray which is violet and blue here and let's maybe even a touch of green if it goes too purpley i add just a touch of green to it and you can see it just takes that right off a little bit of that nice connection see i love that see it's a subtle tone change between that gray and that burnt sienna right in there. And, you know, you just look for those changes. Here, I'll just warm that gray up a bit because that looks like it's going to work right in there and uh, right down here. Right down there like that. I could go a bit lighter on that and move that kind of mark kind of curved to match the curvature there there we go and so i start to look you know all those marks now how is that mark being made so here's this connection here okay how's that being made right in here right in there so you can see though, every little touch that we start to do now just adds a little bit more interest to it. And that's where you gotta kinda slow yourself down and say, yep, this is what I'm gonna do to him now and fix these. A little bit of light right up here by his nose. Just tap that just a bit. And I probably expressed that just a touch too much, but I think it's going to dry down okay. A little touch more right up there. And that just makes that. And now look at the way his head pops off of that. And those antlers are just really pretty, I think. I think that works. Um, I will go slightly larger. So that was my number two. I'm going to go back up to my... Um, number six here let's get some of this violet blue a little green a little burnt sienna that's our darker tone slightly different this time and uh, fix up some of these shadows here well just pull that through see and I just push it with my finger there that looks pretty good warm up some of it so uh, I'll change I'm gonna add a little green a little burnt sienna here warm that up a bit change some of that there see these and see you put that on and you streak it with your finger and it just makes it look like all of his hair and stuff there i just love the way that works let's get a bit darker our violets greens right in here that it's almost really dark right in there which helps his head really come forward. Get that nice darkness right in there. 
and then we'll warm it up with some burnt sienna right as it's going to come right down here towards this. Now, if you want to work the edge, you can add a bit of the open medium in there. That'll keep this and paint over the edge of that light just a bit. Okay. Some of this coming right down here like this. Okay. Maybe uh, some of this dark. And a beautiful artistic thing to do is maybe take that dark, slightly red violet right in here with one or two strokes that, you know, so the viewer, when they look at that, they see blues and burnt siennas, red violets, a little bit of green. You know, they see the differences there. Let's add that dark because that's a cast shadow there. Okay, now... Let's put in some more burnt sienna. We'll just add a little open medium over here so we can work those edges a bit. A little bit of yellow, right? Let's come right down in here and see I'll, I'll pull right into that edge of that of his mane, his here. I'll pull some of this into that. Get some of that interest there, there like that. Okay, and um, some of that's going to slightly darker. We'll go up this side just a bit. Now I'm into the light, which is okay. I'm crossing. What I'm going to do is cross the two just a bit. So I have that. Let's put a little bit of, let's gray that. A little bit of burnt sienna and green make a beautiful grayed coat for him. So we'll put a bit of this gray right out here, right? And then let's uh, get a little bit of our violet gray. So I'll put some of my violet here. I'll add some open medium that it stays wet. We'll get a, a very gray, that, to gray that down a little bit more, so violet, let's get a little bit of green into that. Maybe a little bit of warmth of the burnt sienna. That's a beautiful gray, okay? And probably a little lighter. Make sure you feed it some open medium. Let's take a look right in here that's beautiful gray see how that just calms down and adds some more of that cool nature right over there see but it carries some of that other tone down and i just add a little bit of extender to thin it just a touch and we'll add just a bit of that now let's warm that up right in between the two here let's go burnt sienna and yellow here let's warm that up add some more white right here and let's build a bit build some of these marks of color here and we'll build a bit more a little bit more light just a touch more warmth here smaller marks here, building that, building that up. Now, you can move your brush through. I wipe my brush, and I'll just take some of this back, just lightly and barely touching the surface. I'll go backwards now, back into some of my half tones, and work some of that dark and that light together again. And if I see that, you know, my light, maybe I could have a little bit more dark. I head towards my dark put that in and I'll pull out some of these darks redress my brush because if I pull too out too far out I'll get too much light and then it doesn't I don't you know I'm watching that that I don't drag too much light up to where I want to go and I make a, a really nice transitional area of tone which is what I wanted to do and then I'll just wipe get a new paper towel here wipe my brush come back into my light now this is also where we could get more texture as we build this so we could get more textures as we build some of this smaller little marks a little filbert on this works great as well because it just puts on smaller tones right so a little filbert you can come backwards to some of your grays like, you know, he has different muscle structure and stuff right in here. If 
you want to come back and revisit some of that structure there and then come back and build more light tones here light a little green a little burnt sienna build some of these lighter tones build some marks of textures right in there that just adds so much it's amazing let's take some thicker lights Right down here. There you go. You know, some of the artists, nice wildlife artists, will put some of that on with their, their knives. You know, palette knives and stuff, which works great. I'm going to put a tiny bit of light. Right here. Even though I don't see it on the photo, just pop his face up just a bit there. Just a bit more off of that. And look at the direction of some of these light strokes here. Let's put just a bit of green into that. So, you know, some of these will go this way. So maybe a couple of big heavy marks like this, this way. Okay. And this is, like I said, this is uh, where you have to decide. I mean, do you want to add a little bit more? Let me show you something here. Um, and because this is what you can do. This is the uh, rheology modifier, what we call the thickening agent, okay? And it is fantastic for what we're about to do. And it takes just a tiny bit of this. You put this out. If I take this and mix it up into, watch what happens to this color is it instantly gets super thick. Do you see that? This is, and it takes the tiniest little bit. I mean, sometimes you're just grabbing the air over it. It's tiny, tiny little bit. You don't want to use too much because it'll make it too gummy, too sticky. But look at how it is taken and made this texture, right? Now, and that'll stay there for a while. You have, you know, 20, 30 minutes for that. And I just keep it in its container, put out a little bit at a time. But you could come right in here like this, even with your knife, and you can apply the textures. And that's what, you know, so many wildlife. And the textures give you that visual interest of the, of the paint. So here I have this thicker paint here. And now I can just drag that right like this over some of this area, create those natural highs and lows that you would have there. I can also take my brush, here, let me go back to my six here, with a little bit of water and take this off slightly into some of these different angles where that just comes down like that. And maybe a little burnt sienna, a little bit of green, a little bit more green, these beautiful grays, gray tones that are right in here, these grayer half tones, paint and tap just like this up into, and you will softly modify some of that texture without removing it, and you'll get this more natural, uh, more natural look to his body. So see in his body where it has all of these smaller little hits, you can actually emulate those really nice here. And we'll just tap some of this around here. There we go. Let's get some of that nice shadow in there. And uh, But I like that thick texture right there. It just does a good time, especially if they're coming out of like a winter coat and stuff that gets so thick on it. And this is how you make that nice thick winter coat, the look of that nice thick winter coat. And you can use extenders. You can, you know, I've showed you in other things where, you know, I've used ex thickened, I've used that thickening agent with extenders, with the open medium you know, to create all different kinds of mid-tones and stuff like that with it. And, uh, you know, it just uh, helps so much, especially with that nice winter coat that we have, that we're dealing with on this guy. You know, that's uh, 
Let's put drag down just a bit of that. There. Yeah. Bit mid tone. There. That's going good. A little bit more. Um, so here I'll just take some of this nice, even add some open medium to it so I have some working time. Little thickening agent here. And I can grab some of this. See, it's a more natural. See that you get these highs and lows here. And we get all of the undertones we painted there. But I'll get that more natural look to that. And then I can come back a little darker, a little more green. Not quite as, a little bit more gray. So some green, some open medium. And paint into this. Let's go just a touch lighter here, a bit more, right about in there, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, much better. And tap along, and see, this will create the little shadows that you see in some of his winter coat there. Here. So he's not all smooth. This is his winter coat, right? And um, he's quite chunky. <laughs> and you can get that. Let's add just a touch more light. Little chunky here. And all kinds of ways. So you see me paint these, these elk all kinds of ways. Got a little bit of green in there. I'm going to let that sit and... Um, I will add a touch of the thickening agent and lighten this up even more. Thicken this up. Sometimes leave it kind of mottled here. See this? Leave it so it's not perfect, but it's very thick here. And I'll just push this right over some of that green that I just, greenish look that I just hit that with. You know, maybe we have a little thicker white, white in there. But you know, you, if you're using your knife like that, you're using that in the uh, the shape of his body, right? So in the, in the marks, the contour of his body, that's what I want to say. So we'll add a little burnt sienna, a little bit of this yellow, some open medium. You could use this thick paint here, just. Coming back, that thick paint is just so nice. See how it just small little marks makes the highs and lows of all of his fur, see? Just gives him all of these beautiful looks. And you can copy him more directly if you want. I'm just going to, uh, just gonna move around like that. Maybe uh, every once in a while, clean your knife off so you have a nice, clean little edge here. I'll push some of that in there. Here. Sometimes tap. That tapping makes just nice highs and lows of his fur, right? We'll just take some of that out. See, I like the, the, the shadow here, slightly thin, and that texture paint that I'm working with there, slightly thicker. And as I'm putting that on, I can even brush it on. I don't always have to use the, the painting knife. I can brush it on there as well. There we go. And... Uh, <clears throat> But see how that texture really makes him jump off that canvas off this board. Let's take some of this texture right in here on his front hip. Here we go. And I got a little bit down in there in the shadow. I'll just scrape that off and then use my shadow color here to remove it just a bit. Soften out. Spread it out. But the areas of that texture, the lighter color, 
will just jump right off there, see? Nice way to paint the winter coat on him. Let's get medium to dark color here. Maybe a little bit lighter. A little more yellow. Let's build that just a bit more. So you see, I'll do this. Some wildlife artists, well-known wildlife artists, will do this like five, six times building up through here. Each time they refine it just a little bit more and he comes in refined just a little bit more, a little bit more, getting better and better. Let's get that nice shadowy dark now. And a little bit of green, burnt sienna. Nice shadow dark down in here. His deep, deep shadow. You can see I can just, let's get that shadow on the back leg there. And um, I like that burnt sienna, a little bit of the darulite in that right up on the edge. Gives a little bit more of a glowy burnt sienna orange color here right on his edge. Here, maybe some of that right in here. Right down in there. That looks good. And uh, pull some of that light down. There. See, all of that just makes it look all, you know, very, very different. And it takes a little bit of time, but it's fun. Especially painting with the different consistencies of the paint. Now there's from his rump, there's just a little bit of this light here that's there from his rump. And uh, get a new paper towel here. It's got a little muscle structure, which I want to add. A little open medium right here. We want to curve this muscle structure right in there. There. And uh, and we'll take some light and just pull the edge a bit. Curved muscle structure there. A little bit more of a shadow. Right back here. I mean, it's in the photo, it is his muscle structure there so defined. It's even creating a cast shadow from the light right there. But um, that's kind of cool. Just a touch of light. Right down through here. Right down, there we go. A little bit of that. That is so fun, taking just a tiniest bit of this thickening. You can, I put it in here, now you feel it just gets harder and harder here. It really is easier to use your knife to add that. And you can use the knife to Picked it up. The fusion is a little too soft to really paint effectively with it, but um, you can uh, use your knife or you can use the synthetic, the synthetic brush to do it. We have these synthetics at that are, you know, like your bristle brushes or the uh, golden tackle brushes that we have to. There we go, a little bit, that texture right there. That's kind of nice. Just really puts in that, that structure, his thickening structure there. That's just great of that winter coat. Now let's just get uh, a couple of um, shadows in here to help us with that shape. There, uh, his, his Adam, you know, his shadows showing his muscle shapes and stuff there, and uh, some of these down this side. There, a bit of that yellow burnt sienna, 
mostly burnt sienna right down here. Right down in there, a little bit of the shadow, deeper shadow here. That's good bits of that on him. I love that. And I want to keep him kind of chunky like that. That's very different. I haven't done one quite like that yet. That chunky. <laughs> A little more dark that violet let's just push this neck back in just a touch there we go now I can breathe it should come up a touch higher but I think that that's pretty good and uh, then we'll take a bit of this right out here. Maybe uh, touch more of that light with that. Might be too much, but I kind of like it. You know, sometimes, you know, when you're painting these animals and stuff, you... You know, you might make a mistake like I just did, a little over-expressing of it. But you go ahead and you leave it because it, you know, it's going to dry down, but it's also going to give a nice look. So, you know, ex, you know, take, you know, accentuate some of the differences you see to uh, make more interest in it. You know, just a little bit here and there. And... Uh, yeah, let's uh, accentuate this. There we go. Yeah, just like that. That's just kind of pretty. I like the way he looks. He's chunky and nice <laughs> right in there. I love that gray half tone, which is a little bit more violety and green. And I could put some more of that in here, but um, maybe I'll just push a little this in just on the front of his leg there we go and some of that violet so we'll take just a bit of blue and violet a little bit more violet a little green helps it gray up quite a bit a little bit of light a little green a little bit of light a little bit more green maybe touch of burnt sienna see how each one's graying it a little bit more Let's put some of that gray right around, touching around him a bit, carry some of those colors. And uh, yeah, let's develop a bigger, I like that, let's develop a bigger dark right up here, right, right in here, boom. Just a little too blue, just a touch too blue. Here we go. There. Maybe warm a stroke up there. So you see, this this is really, for me, this is why I get into painting. You know, finding these tones and working like this and the slow evolution of a of the elk like this and finding some of these beautiful colors on him I just so enjoy it and uh, yeah it takes time but man it's fun I'm gonna warm up just a bit here right in there and I love that I love that on him and I like the simplicity of his horns and stuff I might put in just the tiniest little bit more blue right in the front of his eye, which will cool the front there. Yeah. Yeah, that gets him, pops him off. Okay, so I kind of like that. I kind of like that on him. Now, let's go back in, and I'll show you guys some of the, uh, 
the working here that I want to do in here in the midground. I liked, you know, at lunchtime I was looking, yeah, I like that back there. But I want to do a little bit more, maybe change some of the uh, the grounding back here in the back to the midground to some trees. I like that in the photo. So I'm just going to add some, I'm going to take my larger brush first. Some greens, some blues, some burnt siennas. I'm going to have to probably put out a little bit more burnt sienna here. And uh, get this nice and grayed here. Mod a little bit so it's not perfect, okay? So it's not perfect. And uh, let's take a look. And one of the things, you've seen me all the time use the paper towel, right? So we're going to try that too. So what we're going to do is this and break this up, this light little tip of the brush here, like this, and small little verticals, small little verticals, just pushing the brush like this, and we can soften through, try not to increase their size too much, we can soften through, push up the edges here, and remember, the majority of our painting is done, so don't get too wrapped up in this, Okay, I like that. Let's go a little bit thinner, a little open medium, a little extender. Okay, let's, uh, I can go heavier down here, which would be the shadow side. And then just light little pressure out here, which will suggest the lighter side. Okay. There, create hills. So right up through here, maybe I leave most of that and we'll just create a few little marks of trees right there like that. So we'll leave most of that, see? And let's come back up over here even softer yet, maybe even a touch of our light gray color. So this doesn't compete too much with his horns because that could just be the idea of snow back in there as well, right? Doesn't have to be all that. We can make all that depth through here and softer little stuff coming out through here. Maybe a little bit. Here. There we go. Just softer little stuff. That might be a bit dark. If it gets too dark, you can always use a little, what's your solvent? Water, right? You could always use a little water and break some of that up, but you want some of that highs and lows. Let's, um, let's keep most of this maybe towards a field look, but we'll do a bit of this right back up over here. I like this big one inch like this. I've used this, you know, for the last couple of years to do distant trees and stuff. And I just like the look of it. It's not perfect, but it does do a quick job of it and gets it done and gets that color in there, you know, which is what I like. Um, and if I, if I, whoa, shoot, I just hit that thickening agent. Got to get that out of there. Um, if I want to soften, let's get the little blue and white here, a little violety color, any of this. If I think I got too dark, I can just go right back through and put some snow and stuff in there and break some of that up, see? Which doesn't see, you can just touch in and give some ideas of little snow in between the trees and stuff there as well, see? Just breaks that up. Let's get, um, Let's go with some of this gray, some of this white, and we'll just drag like this to increase. This is what I like about Impressionism. I don't have to be perfect. You know, my, my elk is gonna do all that for me. I don't have to be perfect. Let's put a bit of these trees. That's a little too dark, so just idea of a few here. 
right in there like that. Okay. Yeah. And let's put a bit of snow right in here that's going to really bring him forward. Right in there. And some of this angle, so it gives the angle to the the hill there, see? So we get a you can have the flat ground and then you can have this angled slope here. And tapped along. And maybe a little bit grayer, blue, burnt sienna, little violet here, grayer, but still uh, any kind of gray. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. That's a little too blue, so a little more burnt sienna in there. That's better for the shadow side there. Just like that, so it just picks up the shadow side here. Yeah, a little warmer, a little warmer. There we go, a little bit warmer. Some ideas of trees, and uh, let's take a bit of this green and just break up those edges. And I can tap down through some of this to break up some of that light. Like there's little bits of trees down in here, too. See? There we go. There, like that. See? That's kind of pretty. Makes a different kind of look there. Um, yeah, I like that. I think I need to uh, thin out still his uh, head and stuff there just a bit more. It's a bit round. So I'm just looking at him. Maybe a little bit of light in this gray. Let's thin this out just a touch more down his nostril there. Yeah, that's that's a little better for him. And then we'll put that shadow back in there. So this is, you know, this is how I paint guys with most of the stuff is, you know, I work back and forth and when I'm working on a commission or something like this, I work all around the painting. And if I see something, I'll stop and go fix it because, uh, let's just blur that edge just slightly. I'll stop and go fix it because it makes a difference. It does make a difference. You know, let's uh, come in just a touch more. There we go. Yeah. And uh, maybe... Uh, touch of darker burnt sienna, little burnt sienna blue, just on the edge of his nose there. Don't want to take out all that light I did earlier because that was really nice. But that looks pretty good there. Now let's continue on. Maybe some gray. Right through here. Some gray. Right up on those sides there. A little more light. Right up on that side so we get a light shadow maybe right there. That really helps pop him forward too. And let's carry that through maybe over here just a bit. Not the same light but pretty light. And so I'm planning that. See, I'm planning that all right here. 
so that I create that really visual boom shot of it right here and your eye goes out that way. You know, I could soften some of my light grays right out through here to create, that's a little bit too, too warm. Let's go just a touch more blue here. Just break that up just a bit. How much you do, that's up to you. I could put just a, you know, a couple of these little marks right up there like that, which makes like little spaces or openings in the trees. You know, that's all up to you. I want to come up, I want to give the impression of some rabbit brush and stuff, which is, you know, greens and uh, dirty greens and yellows and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, those are, that's going to be, as we start to get back up in through here, we'll have just highs and lows of these colors. So we'll have some snow going through and some rabbit brush and just, you know, dirties and we'll, we'll make more. I want this hillside right up in here. And remember how when we started this all out, I'm going to grab some more burnt sienna here. Remember when we started out um, this painting, we had these real darks and I've lost some of them over time, which this naturally happens. But I want to go back and take some of this burnt sienna and some of this blue and stuff and reset some of that right up here because it really sets a nice ground. Here. Let's just fade this off. This is the casual nature of how I like to paint that stuff, okay? Because it just sets so much nice depth there. Let's get a little yellow, greenish here. There we go. Some of these colors right in there, right? Really going to bring him forward. We'll get some of this right up into him. And remember, we were going to take some of this and do some of this snow at the same time here. Set some of this around, right? And that snow can have a bit of violet in it, which is nice. A little bit of violet. Here, yeah, the, see it takes that sky back down as well. And sometimes, boy, I just like taking it modeled like this with my knife, especially when I'm doing casual paintings, and just to push that in because there's something about doing it with a knife that just gets you that casual nature really easy, you know? And, um, Might end up having to get a touch more of the white. <laughs> I keep this up. Here we go. And uh, some of this right up through there. Some of you just probably went, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> what you don't know is I'm going to cover a lot of that up, so. But I want this broken edges. I want this brokenness up through here. That helps the whole painting come forward, right? We want that. So we got to be brave and just do it. Right? That's what we got to do. Just be brave and do it. Here. Yeah. And so we'll build this up a bit here. Get some of this, pull some of that down. That's what gives you your brush, right? The, the feeling of the brush there. 
pull some of that right in there. Pull this with our there like that. Grab some more of that light yellow here. There we go. And uh, some more of that right in here. Right like that. We can't forget to just grab, where did I do, oh, here it is, with my knife. Can't forget to add some of that right in there. Right in there like that. Some of this you can just reset some of those uh, ground lines, you know, this, oops. Didn't mean to put snow all over his back leg there. I'll just take a tiny bit of water. Take that right off. There we go. Just like that. Yeah, see how he just pops forward on all these different little things here. Now, um, there's, you know, you can finish off like that, like I'm showing you there. You can, um, one of the brushes that you can use like a stiff here um, bristle okay something like a stiff bristle and I had a smaller one here as well but ah oh, here it is so you can use a smaller bristle round take some of your whites I don't want to I don't want this to be one color so whites yellows some of this dirty color roll your brush through it like this so it gets modeled up right so it gets all modeled up with these colors and you know a lot of artists do this when they're going to do the rabbit brush they just create all this brush marks like this and that's how rabbit brush kind of is and you can tap sometimes to create different you know looks to it i like to i i'll do a little bit of this i like the pulling down of it with like the paper towel to give me a different look you know, but there's a lot of artists that will paint this way, will paint the brush this way and, you know, in lots and roll your brush and get different types of looks to it as you roll it and stuff and pull it down. I like to then just blur it. <laughs> That's what I like to do and get some, some looks to it. Make sure you carry some of those colors throughout your composition here, back in through here. Okay, because that's just further color all the way back there. And slide in some of that, that snow. You know, slide in some of that snow and look out there like that, see? And back and forth and with some of those colors. You know, that's, that's what I like. I'm just, I'm painting for color now more than anything else, right? Right, we're painting for color. And so we'll take some of these darks here. And I'll go back and forth between my lights and my darks and build this up here. I really do like the, the light but you can use any of your tools here. So, you know, I like to do this and then just pull down. You know, just give it some different looks and pull down. Sometimes pull up, it gives me different types of looks of brush and stuff. And, but there's a lot of artists that do it a different way. And kind of find your way, you know, find which way you like to do it, you know. I like to do it impressionistically and quick because I, I think that there's just so much more life and energy to a painting that is done quickly like this, you know, power and quick and uh, then one that is, you know, painted too much, you know, so, but everyone's different. We all like different things, right? 
that's the beauty you know and uh, yeah and these kind of when I do this stuff it sells really well for me when I do it like this you know people go wow that's you know did you take a small brush and build all that no <laughs> I didn't I go back and forth break up some of the longer edges here and just use that paper towel that really expensive paper towel here and build up some of my brush this way yeah so I'll put in a few lights like this and then I'll just pull down but consistency is this if your paint moves too much and blends too much you know you're not thick enough your paint is not thick enough add a little bit of that thickening agent to it or some acrylics are just not made to do this that it just can't do this they smear too easy you know but this is one reason why you know where I, I talk to you guys all the time where and make sure you do some horizontal to keep that ground in there and make sure you do some to keep a little bit of snow in there too keep that broken edge of that snow um here we go like that you know but the um you know we talk about you know different things and different qualities of the acrylics and they're all made to do different things you know um, you could never do this with a craft acrylic would never handle like this it's not made to handle like this it's made to do different things other things you know so and not all acrylics are the same. They're just not the same. You know, over the years of... I made my first acrylic formula back in 1983. And, yeah, it was great. It worked great and everything. And then you got to realize that's over 40 years ago. And technology's increased. When, what's happened to the computer? Back in 1983, we didn't have computers. Not, not personal computers, you know. And now you look at this stuff. Look at everything we can do today, you know. So it's, yeah, there's, but formulas of paints and stuff now are completely different as well, you know. So, I mean, how smooth are you going to make this? This is all going to be up to you, you know. Are you going to have, you know, some more stuff going on? How smooth, how heavy? That's all up to you. And since I'm not doing his hooves, I either got to set it down into some snow or do like what's in that photo there and put some brush and stuff right up in front of it. Let's get a little green, a little blue here and uh, push some of our, that's probably a little too much green and blue. We'll just take it off. Push on some other color. Here. There, like that. And, you know, sometimes I'll put this on and people, you know, really love it. And, but to me, it looks, oh, maybe it's getting a little messy, but people just absolutely love it. I love this one, so. But I've learned over time that, oh, I'll just let some of this happen. And, uh, yeah, well, now it might, I might work on his legs just a bit more some of these back areas just a bit more maybe a few more areas of light color into some of that rabbit brush there some more lights and darks right up through here you know just to uh, carry some of that take out just a touch of that light You know, here, just dragging that knife over some of that just to be casual and puts in more casual color of nature into that. But I'll probably uh, here, um, there's some areas on him that uh, we will just correct up a bit. Let me go back what I do with my number six here. Where did I put that? Let's just use this one. My eight. We'll just take a little bit of this yellow 
burnt sienna, maybe a touch of the, and a bit of that blue. So it's a just a touch, and uh, we'll define out some of his edge here a bit more. So he stands out from that uh, really, really busy area there. He'll stand out from it. So a little bit more dark here. His back. There we go. Just a bit. And uh, let's add a bit darker. So he's really kind of fun. It's only taken, uh, what, we're at an hour and 15 minutes. The other one was about an hour and 15 or so. So two and a half hours to paint him. That's not bad. I, you know, probably, um, you know, uh, probably I might, I might come in and just add a bit more right into his face. Uh, that would most likely make me a little bit happier with him because I want this guy to be, and I've got time. I mean, you know, you really look at it, this painting went quite quick, and so I got time into this painting. Um, well, there it is, my little smaller six. I wanna take that and get a darker violet green here. So it looks a little green, so I'll add some more violet and blue to it. This darker, darker tone right here. And let's get that shadowy tone right here from his leg down. Okay. That, so I'm, what it's doing is you can see it's just adding a little bit more depth to it. A bit more depth to this shadow that's going to be there. We can put a little half tone on the front right there. These are just little things that I make. Now, there's also with the wildlife, um, other little touches that I like to do, especially in, in this kind of stuff, is I love to carry the sky down. So it was one of the last things. And I will carry the sky. We've seen me do this with the blues. I like the blues, maybe a little blue violet there, a little violet here. But I love to push a bit of the blues from the sky, especially into some of the shadow areas of the painting. And it just, see, it harmonizes that, bringing it down. And it's just such a great look. And, and when I first do it, and you know, it's so funny, when I first taught it in a class, I said, I had a bunch of students that have been my students for, you know, 10, 15 years. And I said, we're gonna put blue on this. And they're like, You've lost your mind. <laughs> I just, yeah, maybe I kind of have, but you know what? I love that spark that it adds. So we're going to try it. And uh, yeah, everyone loves it. And today I look at some of their paintings when they post it and stuff, and they're putting, I see them putting that blue out, and it's just like, yep, it does work. You know, you might hit a few areas. And, you know, I learned that from just looking at some of the masters and stuff of what they did and where they put it and stuff. And I just loved it. And it just became part of something that I touch and do, little sparks of it. Some different values of it, but little sparks of it, you know, that I just love adding now. And, you know, I'll add little bits of it. If I feel something is overall too warm, I'll just add little bits of it through the painting here as well. But, uh, you know, like right in through here, right up in here, boom, just a little bit of blue. Just a little bit of blue, a little bit of blue. You don't see it at all in the photo, but this is the artistic license we take, right? the artistic license we take. So that looks pretty good. A little bit of shadow there. We'll take just a bit of that out there. That looks pretty good. I like him. And uh, so anyway, that will kind of wrap this one up. I will probably, though, 
do a little bit more work on him. But uh, for the most part, that'll give you guys a good idea about uh, how I go about painting. But I'll probably do just a little bit more work on him. Overall, I like the entire painting, the composition, the casual nature of the, the composition and stuff. Um, you know, you could, and, and I capture, I feel like I captured even that, you know, that rabbit grass and stuff like that. We captured basically that, that feeling of it. And uh, without getting too much snow or white right up here, captured some of that back feeling to it. Very casual, you know, and uh, we'll do some very, you know, maybe in the future some super realistic painting of some elk and stuff, which... I love doing those too, but boy, I just love tossing paint around. There's something about tossing that paint around. Um, you know, one last thing, let me just show you. I mean, do you really want to have a focal point? I might as well just show you guys this right here. So this is where I'll take a warmer like gray and watch what happens because one of the darkest, coolest colors on him is right over here. And if I just intensify that light inner exchange right in there, with that, that makes him even more pull forward with more depth. Does that make sense? So your depth in your painting, your depth in your painting is your warm against your cool, your light against your dark, your brighter colors against your tone colors. And so that's where you're going to get your, your depth of your painting and your interest, the interest to your painting. Let's put just a touch of a, shadowy violet kind of right up here coming right up into some of that just a bit there we go and so you can see that really just pops him forward okay he's really a lot of fun so a couple hour two and a half hours yeah about two and a half little over two and a half and uh, you've got a nice painting here, 24 by 18, Just and, and we'll frame that up, probably a nice dark color. I will do just a little bit more there because he's coming along great, and I do want to add just that extra little bit. But he's got a good look to him, just at two and a half hours, you know, that's, that's pretty good. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I enjoyed painting along with you today. And like I say, if there's uh, something else you want to see, just click that like. The next one I got coming up in the next day or so is a Western. So we got another Western coming up and then we go back to some flowers and back to other things and other landscapes and stuff and have a lot of fun. Um, but if there's something you want to see, make sure you make a comment down below. Please uh, help us. I'm almost at 200,000. I'm just a little bit shy. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and help us get up over that. Or if this is a year later and I'm up over 200,000, let's go to 300,000. Okay. Or I appreciate it, guys. We appreciate you watching our channel. We're hoping you, uh, uh, you know, we're learning a few things. And thank you so much for joining us on our little journey through all these different painting things. We enjoy having you here, okay? Think about subscribing to the channel, supporting the channel. Everything we try to do is free here, but we do have a membership. I put photos up, and uh, every once in a while, we put discount coupons for paints and brushes and all that kind of stuff up into the membership too, so make sure you check that out. All right, thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you uh, right back here on the next one in just a couple days. Bye-bye.